Good morning. We're making this recording uh, on Friday, the 27th of May for the Memorial Day weekend. And because we're having a special uh, memorial celebration of life service for our dear Sunday school teacher, David Bilheimer, that has gone on to be with the Lord. So if you're in the area and you knew David, uh, we invite you to come to the church tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock and celebrate the life of our brother, David Bilheimer. Uh, we want to, today we want to get into a special study on our prayer attitude, our prayer, as we pray, our prayer attitude is very important. And let's, let's go to prayer right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to open up your word. Lord, you gave us instructions about prayer. You showed us how to pray. And so Lord, we want to pray not only the way you instructed us, but according to your will. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to blow the shofar and get into our study this morning. This study today concerning our attitude of prayer is very important because we're humans. And, and humans, uh, we, we tend to have uh, our relationship with God a lot of times tends to be based on, on what he can do for us and what we, or what we can receive from him rather than being willing to receive what he has for us. Now, when we pray, when we pray, your will be done, then we're ready to receive however he wants to do it, whether he wants to answer right now, whether he wants to tell us to wait, or whether he wants to answer it in a way that we would have never done, what we would have never imagined. Have you noticed a lot of times that's how the Lord answers prayer? His ways are above our ways. We we think we have an answer, a way to work something out, and we ask God to, to do it, but he always has a better way. Uh, so remember that our trust and our faith and hope are in the person of God, his faithfulness to us according to his promises, not in getting what we want from him, but according to who he is and his faithfulness. His ways are not our ways. His ways are far above our ways. He alone is able to keep a perfect balance between providing what we need and supplying what we want. A lot of times we're asking for things that we really don't need, but we want, and he keeps it. If you pray and ask the Lord, he keeps us in balance so that we don't tend to just constantly ask for things that we, that we want. He will give you things you want. He'll bless you with extras, with little surprises from time to time. But most of the time, we, we need to focus on what we need and asking the Lord according to his will. He'll always answer us in a way that loves us, that shows his love and serves us best or accomplishes his purpose in our life. The Bible shows us that our Father knows what we need even before we ask. In Matthew 6 and 8, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Uh, this, is, this is so important for us to understand. Jesus tells us that our Father knows ahead of time, but we're his children. He wants us to come to him and make petition. When you were a parent, how many times when you saw your child needing or wanting something, uh, you knew exactly what they were going to ask you even before they came to you and asked? Well, our Heavenly Father knows everything about us. He knows what we're going to ask even before we ask. And we can talk to God even about our desires. We can, we can, we, it's not wrong to talk to God about what you want or what you desire. And, but then we have to surrender our request to him, our perfect father, and pray. Uh, when, and when he says no, or when he says to wait, we need to receive that. He knows best. He knows ahead of time how things are going to unfold. And he knows best what we need and when we need it. Uh, and, and so that we will, we'll, our, our focus will be on him and what he intends for us, what is best for us. And that's really important. We need to pray according to what is best for us in his will. Pray, always pray, thy will be done, thy will be done. Jesus taught us to pray that way. So uh, freely offer your prayers and intercessions to God that sincerely uh, trust him Trust everything you have need of to an all-knowing God and an all-powerful God and always loving God. So that's important. He's all-knowing, he's all-powerful, he's all and he's always loving. 
always loving you. His, his desire is for you to be blessed. What is best for you according to his plan and purpose for your life. He's already designed a plan and purpose for your life. A lot of times some of the things we're asking for that we want, if they were granted to us, we, it would derail us from the plan of God in our life. Uh, I had that happen early, earlier in my ministry uh, where was, I was offered uh, a part of a company and if I would have taken that direction, I, it would have derailed me from the ministry and the plan that God had for my life. Uh, is your faith, is our faith in our prayers or do we pray to be heard with long uh, prayers, carefully crafted prayers to be heard by others. I mean, a lot of times uh, people pray and they, they prepare a beautiful prayer so that it will be heard by others and, and impress others. And that's not what prayer is all about. about. Our prayer needs to be a vertical. We need to be vertically talking to God and not concerned about what others think about our prayers. And much of the deep prayer is done when we're alone with the Lord in the wee hours of the morning or at, at, late at night or in the middle of the night when you wake up and you talk to God or, or just getting alone in a room where there's no one else to be hearing your prayers. Uh, Jesus gives us this instruction in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be heard, may be seen by men. So that's not the purpose of prayer. It's not prayer is not performance. Prayer is, is deep longing, desire to have communication with God, to to speak to Him and to hear from Him. Jesus says, "Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Uh, they 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 wanted to be recognized. They got recognized on the face of this earth, hypocrites, and and they they that's all the reward they get." But you, he says, but you, to his disciples, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in the secret place will reward you openly. And so don't worry about your receiving any kind of reward for praying, calling out to God. The Lord takes care of all of that. That's, that's not our business. We just... We want to have relationship with the Father. We want to have relationship with Jesus and with the Holy Spirit. And we want to communicate and then hear what, what God has to say to us. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. The heathen tend to chant things over and over again and, and louder and louder trying to get their God to hear. Remember when... Uh, Elijah was having the contest on Mount Carmel and, 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 and in the Old Testament and, uh, and, the, and the heathen uh, prophets were crying out and chanting and, and, and screaming, calling out to their God and, and then Elijah began to mock them and maybe, oh, maybe he went on a trip and in the Living Bible it says maybe he had to go to the bathroom. Uh, and he, he was mocking the prophets because uh, they were chanting and yelling and screaming, even cutting themselves, trying to get the attention of their pagan gods. Our God hears, we can be privately praying and we can be whispering and loving our, and, and in a loving, prayerful relationship with our Lord and he hears everything you're saying. They think that they will be heard by their many words. Sometimes uh, uh, the length of prayer is done for performance too. We, we need to pray sincerely. If your prayer is long, so be it. But if it's a short prayer, if you're just saying, Jesus, I love you. This situation is going on in my life. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Sometimes that's the most powerful prayer that men can pray on the earth is help me, Jesus. Therefore, do not be like them for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. And then Jesus said, in verse 9, the Lord gives us this pattern of prayer. And this is so important for us. You know, we don't have to pray it word for word each time, but we need to know this prayer and we need to know the principles of this prayer. And many times uh, this is called the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father. 
but really it's the disciples' prayer. This is the way Jesus taught his disciples. And if you're a believer in Christ, you're a disciple of Christ. And this is the way he taught us, his disciples, to pray. He says, in this manner pray, our Father in heaven. And, and he is God of creation. He's God of the heavens. He's God of all creation. Know his high standing. Know that he's almighty. Hallowed be your name. His name is above all names. Your kingdom come, your will be done. His kingdom, pray his kingdom come. He, the Lord is going to come at the end of the tribulation period here on the face of the earth. He's going to come and set up his kingdom for a thousand years of peace, a thousand years reign here on the earth. Your will be done. And that is so important. It's not what I want. It's not what you want. It's his will. Once you become a believer in Christ, what's more important than anything in your life is that God's will be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Look at the comparison there. The will of God is always in heaven. There's no, there's no rebellion in heaven. That rebellion has been thrown out. It says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be here on earth as it is in heaven that the will of God is being accomplished. And the will of God doesn't mean what you think is best for you, your family, your city, your nation. The will of God is, is his will so that his plan will unfold according to the word. Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread is, is this scripture. Our daily bread is what the Lord wants to speak to you today. Uh, more important than, than bread is every word that God gives us. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins as we forgive others who sin, that sin against us. See, this is so important. That's tied together. We're, we, we, we can't be released from our sins if we're not forgiving others who have sinned against us. That doesn't mean they've stopped sinning against you. They might still be sinning against you, but forgive them. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, they had nailed him to the cross. They had beaten him. They had ridiculed. They mocked him. They nailed him to the cross, and he's being crucified. And he cries out to the Father, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And many times people are doing things to you that are ugly, they're evil, they're brutal even. And, and we have to cry out to the Lord, Lord, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. When people say hateful things to you or about you, we need to say, Lord, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. And do not lead us into temptation. The Lord he promised he, with every temptation, he'd give us a way of escape. We ask the Lord to, to keep us out of temptation. Always show us that way of escape, but deliver us from the evil one, that we'd be free from the devices of the devil here on the face of the earth. Deliver us from the evil one. And then we acknowledge his might, his power, and his knowledge, his wisdom. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen we have to constantly acknowledge he is creator god we're his creature one of, we're just one of his lowly creatures i mean there's so much arrogance on the face of the earth there's such a spirit of pride even in the churches a lot of a lot of leaders are puffed up with pride uh, but we need to bow down and acknowledge him as creator god and we're just this tiny little creature that he has given favor and chosen us to believe on him. What a what an awesome, what an awesome blessing we have. And so this is the pattern of prayer that the Lord has given us. When we pray, our faith is not about the great amount of faith we have, but remember Jesus himself reminded us that even a small amount of faith can move a mountain. Our faith is in the one who answers the prayer. Our faith is not in our great faith. We don't say, well, I'm coming to you because I really believe and I know you're going to answer because of my great faith. No, we have, we have faith in the one who answers prayer. In Matthew 17 and 20, the, the second part of that verse, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, a mustard seed is a very tiny seed that produces 
a big plant, great results. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. So all you need is a little bit of faith in the one who does the impossible and the one who works the miracles. Our faith is in God, not in our faith. We need to get that in balance too. So we need to have this, these right attitudes. I sh it should say right attitudes about prayer on the title of this message. I'll have to change that. Our prayer attitudes. Yeah, I need to put a plural on that. Uh, so clearly our faith is not about what we have or what we can do, but how strong we feel about something. Instead of our faith, our faith is to be, uh, our faith is, it's, our, so clearly our faith is not about what we have or what we can do or how strong we feel about something. Instead, our faith is to be directed toward God whom, to whom we pray and what he alone can do. See, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by your wisdom, it's not even by your knowledge of the word that things get accomplished, but by the spirit, by the power and the spirit of God. To be truly effective in prayer, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. So that's leading us into this part of the study. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. He gives us anointing and power to pray. He gives us wisdom to pray. He, he, he helps us to pray according to the will of the Father. He's there to reveal to us uh, who he is and what he wills to do. He will reveal the Father. The Holy Spirit never speaks of himself. He reveals the Father. He reveals Jesus, the Son. But he, he is the one who's the presenter. He, he reveals or presents the Father. He presents the Savior. The Spirit will help us to know how to pray in alignment with the will of God. We, we always think we know God's will in a situation, but it may be totally different than the way we're seeing because God's ways are so much higher than our ways. Uh, I want you to think about it for a moment. The things that are going on on the face of the earth right now, uh, we think, oh, things are, there's chaos. Things are totally out of control. If you read Matthew chapter 24, you'll see that Jesus, Jesus even told his disciples, all the things that are happening right now. They asked him, what will it be like before you come back? And he described almost everything that we're seeing happening right now. And so all of these things, and this can be hard for you to hear, but all of these things are according to the will of God. These things are happening just exactly as Jesus said. These things are happening so that the plan of God can be unfolded for the day in which we live and the days ahead, the days to come. And that's very important that we understand that so we don't get discouraged. We, we don't, when somebody comes to you and they're troubled about what's happening on the face of the earth right now, let them know. Don't, don't let your heart be troubled. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand that these things must come to pass before the Lord returns, and you need to be ready when he comes. He's coming for those who believe. You need to be ready when he comes. This is all of these events that are going on in the face of the earth right now are powerful evangelistic tools for the believer in Christ. These are things that we can be sharing and helping people so that they can understand God's plan for these last days and they can be prepared. They can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before he returns for those who love him and those who believe on him. Look at, look at Romans chapter 8. In verse 26, speaking of the Holy Spirit assisting us as we pray, he says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. Sometimes our prayer is weak because we're, we're, so, uh, we're in such despair, we don't even know how to pray. It says, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Have you ever been to that place? where you were desperately praying and you had no idea how to pray and you just groan and travail as the Spirit gives you, your spirit that cry unto the Lord. Uh, it says in verse 27, now he searches the hearts and knows the mind of the, what, what, what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That's so important. 
When we allow the Holy Spirit to help us to pray, he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That's, that is critical to us, especially we, in, the, in the time, the day in which we live on the face of this earth, things are so uh, troubling and in, in turmoil, uh, sometimes we, we're not even sure how to pray. We need Holy Spirit assistance. And then we know that faith comes by hearing. Uh, our faith needs to be quickened by the Word of God. We need to know the Word of God and so that we'll have faith to pray in Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As the Holy Spirit leads us in the Father's will, our faith will rise and be strengthened. Then we can ask boldly and with confidence for what we ask according to the will of God. Uh, perhaps in this parable, in, in Luke chapter 18, when Jesus says, well, when the Son of Man uh, comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Maybe he was asking, will he really find anyone who's listening to the voice of the Spirit to receive the will of God when they pray? Asking according to the will of God that things be done. Uh, pray and be encouraged. Be encouraged to pray and ask Holy Spirit to help you pray. You'll be comforted when you know that the Holy Spirit is helping you pray and praying according to the will of God. Your loving Father is waiting to hear from you, loving to both hear from you and to speak to you. His relationship with you is what he values as we're getting ready to wrap up this teaching. So much, he, he wants a relationship with you so much so that he sent his only begotten son to lay down his life so that you could be that that bridge between man and God could be gapped by the blood of Jesus and you could be in relationship with the Father. I want to pray this prayer. Father, I pray that that from the place of love and communion that we each be found faithful and faith-filled, that we might each listen to the Spirit's voice and follow his leading in prayer, that we might not grow weary, but each day in the presence of God who will shield us from the lies and discouragement of this life and from the enemy, the devil, that our faith and our trust rest in God alone, not in what we feel, not in what we think we know, but our faith will rest in God alone, not what he can give us, but in him alone. And his will be done. It doesn't matter if we agree with it or not. It's his will. You better just bow down and submit to it. Our Lord, we come to you now. If there's one listening that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that this day they will cry out, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. I believe that you died on the cross and on the third day rose from the grave to give me eternal life. Come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.